Yeah, a couple of videos ago, uh, we talked about uh, the basics of making a frequency measurement on an oscilloscope, you know, say from a, a signal source, and hey, you count divisions to measure frequency and things like that. And a couple of guys uh, commented and I uh, was wondering if uh, I could do a video to talk about uh, looking at a signal both in the time domain as well as in the frequency domain, like on a spectrum analyzer, and showing how the measurements, like for amplitude, for example, you know, measured on the scope and uh, measured for amplitude looking at it uh, you know, on the spectrum analyzer are the same thing and how to relate them. So, so that's what I've got set up here. So uh, I've got this little RF signal generator set, set up to uh, give me a signal at about 3.5 megahertz so, uh, in the uh, 75 80 meter uh, amateur radio band. That signal's coming out and going into the scope uh, input here. Now here's a note of caution and a common mistake that people will make. A lot of times these uh, signal generators, like this, uh, this guy right here, has got a, uh, an output whose output impedance is close to 50 ohms. What that means is, is that the amplitude that you get is going to be a function of the load you place on it. And especially with an RF signal generator, in general, they're expecting to see a 50 ohm termination uh, with the signal. Uh, so with a 50 ohm output impedance and a 50 ohm termination, um, you, know, you essentially will get you know a, a, a specified amplitude. Uh, if we don't load it into 50 ohms, you load it into something higher, then you don't get that same 50 ohm to 50 ohm voltage divider effect, and the output amplitude will get larger. So, for example, if I move this termination from 50 ohms to something larger, you can see the signal's kind of gone over, you know, beyond the screen. Okay, I bring it back to 50 ohms. There we go. And that's important because if we're going to make measurements, you want to kind of use a common impe load impedance as a reference. So uh, we're going to use 50 ohms here. And then my spectrum analyzer actually has a 75 ohm input impedance. But I've got a, this is a, uh, a 75, or 50 ohm to 75 ohm uh, min loss pad. So it gives me a 50 ohm impedance here. And uh, the result there is you get a 5.7 dB correction factor that we add into the spectrum analyzer to kind of correct for the loss of that. But now we'll see a 50 ohms here. So now the scope is loading the signal to 50 ohms. The spectrum analyzer is going to load the signal to 50 ohms. So the amplitude measurements should match because the signal is loaded with the same uh, amplitude or the same uh, load impedance. And that's something to be real careful of if you're trying to make accurate measurements. If you're measuring a scope and then measure down on your circuit or something like that and they're different, it could be that uh, you're changing the load that the signal generator is seeing or your circuit is seeing. So it's something to be careful of. So now that we've established we're going to use a common uh, load impedance, let's go make a couple of quick measurements. I'm also going to talk a little bit about distortion. Um, and uh, while a scope is may not be the best tool to look at that. So let's take a look at this signal. So if we look here carefully, I've got a... Uh, 50 millivolts uh, per division here, and if we look, I've got basically a uh, a six divisions of uh, of amplitude here. So we can say six you know, times 50 millivolts. That's you know basically 300 millivolts peak to peak. All right. So now the spectrum analyzer is typically going to measure a signal in dBm, which is decibels relative to a milliwatt. So we just need to convert. Um, this 300 millivolts peak to peak to dBm. And we can do that real quick here on the calculator. And uh, so we know we've got uh, 300 millivolts peak to peak. That's uh, you know, kind of right here. Okay. So there's our 0.3 uh, volts. So uh, we can cut that in half, divide that by two. That means uh, 300 millivolts peak to peak is 150 millivolts uh, RMS. So that's what we're looking at there. And if we divide that by square root of two, so I can do two square root divide by so I've got 106 millivolts RMS okay so now that we've got the RMS voltage we can convert this to power okay we know we're going into a 50 ohm load so the the uh, equation is simply V squared over R so I'm just going to take and multiply the signal against itself okay so I just hit enter and times so that's uh, my squared voltage and then I'll do uh, divide that by 50 ohms so that's 225 microwatts of power Okay, now we need to convert that microwatts of power into dBm. So it's dBm is dB relative to a milliwatt. So to make this relative to a milliwatt, we divide by a milliwatt. Okay, and then we take uh, the uh, base 10 logarithm of that and multiply by 10. So I'm looking at uh, minus 6.48 dBm. 
is uh, what the actual power measurement is converted to dBm, minus 6.4 or 7, 8, or something like that. So if we take the signal out of the scope and we bring it over into the spectrum analyzer, okay, there's the signal on the spectrum analyzer. I could do a quick little uh, you know, peek on the marker and then if we take a look, the marker is sitting at uh, Oh, minus 6.5, it's bouncing around, of course. But uh, so we said minus 6.48, and this is kind of bouncing around between minus 6.49, minus 6.5. That's pretty close. We're definitely well within a tenth of a dB of making the measurement on a scope and on the spectrum analyzer. So that's good. Okay, so that's how you do that calculation, and that's what it looks like in these two domains. So now the question is let's take a look at distortion. So if I take, bring the signal back over here into the scope, and we look at this, so we might look at that and say, that's a pretty good looking sine wave. I don't really see much distortion on that. So if I was building a little QRP transmitter in the 80 meter band, I might say, that's pretty good. So, but am I really meeting the FCC requirements for a harmonic distortion by looking at this? If I look at this signal, it actually looks pretty clean. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I might say, yeah, I'm good. Maybe I don't need a filter. But the problem is, is that a scope is not the best way to look at uh, harmonic distortion. Especially the FCC for amateur radio says that the harmonic distortion levels for signals below 30 megahertz, the, the second and third harmonic distortion components, etc., need to be at least 43 dB down from the fundamental frequency. So let's take a look. Then I look at this and say, well, this looks darn near perfect. They've got to be, you know, it's got to be a good signal. So let's bring this signal back over into the spectrum analyzer here. Okay. And, uh, so if we take a look at that, Say, well, there's my signal. Let's uh, just go and change my uh, span here to kind of include some of those other harmonics. So I'm just going to take the, um, the stop frequency and push it out. So now I can see there's my fundamental, there's my second harmonic, my third harmonic, my fourth harmonic. It's like, well, uh oh, we might be in trouble here. Okay, so I'll do a quick little peak search to put my marker back up there on the peak. Okay, so he's sitting there at uh, you know, minus 6.6 .6 or so, minus 6.5. Now how far down is that guy? Well I can go into my marker functions here and tell this marker to be a delta, uh, a delta marker All right, and then I'll do a, uh, a peak search and move that to the next peak over here so now I've got a marker down here on this guy, my reference marker is up there lo and behold if I take a look at this I can see that that marker it might be clear to see up here is only 38 dB down let's kind of get this thing to focus here so that marker is only 38 dB down from the fundamental. So I've missed the mark in terms of uh, distortion by about 5 dB. So this would not pass the FCC requirements for uh, emission requirements. And then if we take a look here, if I kind of keep moving over, my third harmonic, oh, went, went too far, let's go back, there we go. My third harmonic is 42.4 dB down, so he's just barely there. So what this tells me is if this was a, say, a VFO instead of, you know, uh, my little signal generator over here, but if this was say a VFO that I was using in a, a QRP transmitter for example, this tells me that this amount of distortion says that I really need to put a low pass filter on, uh, on that output to drop the second and third harmonic and obviously the higher harmonics down below, well below 43 dB down from the fundamental so that I pass the requirements. So this one you know, case in point here is that if you are building some homebrew stuff always design in a low pass filter because even if you look at your signal on the scope and it looked kind of perfect on the scope um, the scope is not going to be able to show you the signal and your eyes aren't going to be able to see this level of distortion okay with it, where this this harmonic distortion actually ex exceeds uh, what the FCC allows you can't see it with the naked eye on the scope but you can easily see it on a spectrum analyzer not a lot of people have the luxury of having a spectrum analyzer in their shack um, so you might use a reference receiver to try to see how, how strong that signal is or something like that. Or better, better yet, put a low-pass filter uh, as part of your design and ensure you can knock these uh, harmonic distortion components down. So anyway, that's a quick look at uh, measuring amplitude um, of a signal on a scope as well as on a spectrum analyzer and how you have to be careful of the load impedance that your signal is seeing so that your measurements are accurate. Uh, and then also uh, a look at distortion and how a scope may not, you know, show you the signal clear enough and your eyes may not be able to see clear enough uh, levels of distortion that would exceed FCC uh, emission requirements. 
So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, again, comments welcome, and other videos you'd like to see, please let me know. Thank you.